Hello everybody, welcome in today to My Sweet Home Living. My name is Tracy Campbell. I'm so excited for today's project. Hope you'll come on in and join me for another, I think it might be our last one, unless I think of something else last minute that I have forgotten. Um, our final project in our country, primitive style country breakfast little series that we've been doing. If you've been following along last week, we, um, gosh, what did we do? We revamped the uh, tea kettle, the coffee kettle, and we did, oh, we've done the primitive little jelly jars. We have done, um, oh my goodness, my mind has just gone blank. Oh, we did the faux pancakes right here. We did the faux pancakes. Uh, I know there's something else. Of course, we've done the, far, uh, the faux biscuits. If you missed those, we did those the week before. The faux biscuits. <laughs> if you missed those, those were so much fun. You have to go back and catch the replay on those. Uh, and I'm sure we've done some more. And I just, it, it's just leaving my memory. Come on in here and tell me good morning. Well, actually, it's not good morning. Probably in most, uh, well, the eastern half of the U.S. <laughs> it is already afternoon over there, but it is still 11:15 over here in Kentucky. So come on in here and join me. I, I've got some crazy hair going on, you guys, today. So y'all will just have to overlook my appearance. <laughs> it, we've been busy, busy, busy working behind the scenes getting ready for this weekend's vintage and thrifted DIY marathon. The fall special weekend is here and uh, we're so excited and getting prepared and ready for that for you guys. It all starts Saturday morning at 7 a.m. all the way up to 10 p.m. Saturday night and then we restart for day two on Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Central and we'll go all the way up until 10 p.m. Sunday night. So almost two completely full days of all things vintage and thrifted you won't want to miss it um, let me know if you want to find out where the group event is or the event group is for that so that you don't miss it all I believe we have 49 creators and we have two uh, live auction like vintage not auctions but vintage items sales I'll spit that out in a second I apologize <laughs> but it is gonna be one epic weekend if you love things that are vintage and or thrifted you won't want to miss it it's going to be an amazing event come on in here and tell me good uh, hello hello not good mornings because i know good morning's already pretty much gone i'm still kind of in morning mode for some strange reason <laughs> good morning miss linda oh thank you I, I tell you my hair today is just up it's just up uh running and doing things all week long and today's yard work day so there's no sense in me spending a lot of time to fix my hair today because i'm going out to the yard after i finish here with you guys and then uh getting ready to hunker down for the next few days for the vintage and thrifted marathon this weekend hello shauna hello treva hello miss pat from unique okay you guys let's hop into it you all know that i have problems throwing away old jars <laughs> if you are like me then you're gonna love today's project. <laughs> we have been repurposing lots of uh, jars lately. We've done uh, repurposed some old yogurt jars. We've reused those and made those into some little primitive little style jelly jars that were so cute. You saw me repurpose an old pickle jar over the weekend. Uh, last Saturday, I was in this marathon event. I repurposed this uh, old pickle jar and made it to look like uh, authentic a stoneware crock using this grubby technique uh, we've also repurposed <laughs> where is it where is it where is it back here <laughs> this is almost like a smaller version but we turned this into a little grubby nightlight jar and i took my string of lights out for right now but i usually put a little string of small string of lights in here and it gives off a soft little glow when i put it in my little vignette so i've been repurposing jars left and right you guys i have tons more and of course you all know that i store my coffee grunge mix in a just a reusable glass. Uh, I think this is an Alfredo sauce jar. <laughs> so I love using old jars. I just can't stand to throw them out. So today's jar, <laughs> today's jar of the show, uh, is some Starbucks jars. I know you guys have seen these, right? Well, I'm not a coffee drinker, so therefore I don't really care for Starbucks, but 
uh, my youngest, he loves coffee. Good morning, Miss Christine. I did not, and I didn't even try Christine. I did not get the top off my pickle jar. <laughs> it's still on there and I still need to finish the back. I'm gonna do a reversible image on the back. This one is for fall, the back one. I might, I can't decide if I wanna do it for Christmas or every day. Uh, so I'm still hunting for the, just the right label for the back side of that. But uh, I, I'm loving that jar, I love that jar. Uh, but I did not get that old rusted lid off, but it'll come off eventually. <laughs> and if not, it'll be okay too. Uh, so I bought a few of these, and of course he had a special treat of some uh, Frappuccino and some, um, what was this? I don't remember what this was, but he had a little special treat um, <laughs> last week <laughs> so that I could have the jars. So. Um, this is what we're going to use today. We're going to actually tie this in and make these look like some vintage little milk uh, glass jars for uh, the rest of our little primitive style breakfast uh, displays that we've been working up the last couple of weeks. Um, Mimi, I find all of my vintage labels, you guys, really there's a designer on Etsy that I love her style and the name of her shop is called Chocolate Rabbit and uh, all of her designs are so beautiful. I use them for lots of things. I use them for uh, my little feed sacks. Uh, let me show you, I know you guys have seen this. These little feed sacks, this is one of her little label designs, printables. I printed it on fabric, made that. Um, and then I use it, uh, let me show you this one as well. I made it t t with an old Quaker Oats container, used one of her label designs to do this. I mean, the sky is the limit and so, um, she has tons of different designs. So if you find something you like, there's usually like three or four different images in a set for like three or four dollars. So you can't really beat that. And once you purchase it, you can print it and use that design as many times as you want. So it's really a good, I think, great way to do that instead of uh, buying a one-time use paper or one-time use product. You can print it as many times as you want so you really get your your value out of it okay now the label that i'm going to use today i'm going to use the label you all know <laughs> is actually a label that we is in a set that we have already worked on uh, and it's just a little buttermilk isn't that cute a little buttermilk uh, design so um i've printed this off i shrunk it down a little bit to make it work for my jars today. Uh, they come in like one standard size. <clears throat> you download it, but you you know if you're using like a home printer, home copier, you can enlarge it, shrink it to fit what you need, and that's what I did. So um, as long as you kind of know the ins and outs of your printer or your copier or whatever, you can really do a lot. Uh, hey, Miss Rose. Yes, she does. You checked her out on Etsy. If you would like to uh, to have her shop link, I'd be more than happy to share that with you guys. I just, I love her stuff. Love it. Uh, I do think she has a discount code. I had someone, one of you all messaged me. If you purchase, I think, a certain amount, you get like a 18 or 15% off discount or whatever. Um, but I, I'm, I don't know if I can go back and find that information, but uh, I'm sure you can message her on Etsy and ask if I buy a large quantity, do you offer a special discount? And I'm sure she'd probably, you know, be able to share some information on that. I'm sure because we have sent lots, <laughs> lots of you her way. So tell her Tracy at My Sweet Home Living has sent you and, um, Hopefully she'll get to know me very well because <laughs> I love her designs. All right, you guys, all I've done is I've peeled the labels off of this Starbucks glass jar and I didn't even bother with getting the goopy stuff off, you guys. I couldn't find my gooby gone this morning, so I just left it and I thought, you know what? It's gonna work just fine anyway for what we're gonna do. I'm not even gonna have to worry about it. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of some chalk paint. We're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give this a quick coat of some white um chalk paint i should have brought over and i didn't um foo I'll tell you what we'll do we'll use this little jar <laughs> i'm gonna put a little bit of the chalk paint right in here and i need my chalk paint is just about dried up i needed to add some water to it before i started and i didn't so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a little bit of coffee grunge mix 
You guys have seen me use this like crazy uh, over the last probably month and a half, two months. And I did pull it out of the fridge this morning. And I'm telling you, I had about a quarter of an inch of like so solid sediment in the bottom of this, which is all that vanilla and cinnamon that kind of goop up at the bottom and the coffee just kind of goop up at the bottom. I shook it and I thought, hmm, it's not going to break loose like it usually does. So I did have to pop it in the microwave and give it a good, you know, a little warming. Uh, just enough to kind of break it loose and then it kind of, it's mixed right on up and you can see all that goodness in there and it's no longer settled completely at the bottom. Uh, so we're in good shape there. I'm going to pour just a little bit, a little bit of this in this little jar. I'm just using this little jar, you guys, as a little mixing bowl. <laughs> for my paint because I forgot to bring over a little uh, paper cup or paper plate. So it's gonna be our little mixing spot for right now because my chalk paint is incredibly thick. Oh my gracious, you guys. <laughs> so I'm gonna mix a little bit of that coffee grunge in with that. A little bit goes a long way and I don't even know if this is gonna work. We will see. Yeah, but we're gonna need a whole lot more. I'm just going all in, you guys, because this is almost empty, so I'm probably going to end up using it all anyway. Um, and this is just going to kind of soften that white a little bit. This is the plaster color, um, just the Waverly chalk, but you could use any kind of white chalk paint. Honestly, you could even use acrylic and get away with it. But I think um, for glass, I think the chalk would give you a better adhesion. Okay, so that's why we're going with chalk. Uh, I'm going to add just a little bit more of this since I added a little bit more paint. We're gonna give this a real quick coat um, of this and we're gonna proceed right on to the next step. I've got my dryer handy and ready um, so that we can make sure that we're good to go there. It'll dry super quick. Uh, I'm not worried about where that label was because this is really gonna kind of cover it up and um, we'll be putting a label of it on our, of our own on it so it's not really gonna show you guys not gonna show at all this is just gonna kind of give it that creamy color and you can decide you might need to do more than one coat I guess it depends on the thickness of your paint honestly okay um, this is going on super quick I'm not gonna worry fret too much about a straight line up there at the top because I'm gonna embellish that top part here in just a little bit. And um, you won't even see any jagged lines up there, I don't think, when we're finished. And if so, we can go back and touch it up. This is gonna come together pretty quickly, I think. And it's so easy, so easy. You guys absolutely loved the little jelly jar project, which was another simple and quick and easy project. You guys loved that. So this is another good, quick project that you can do with barely anything, you guys. <laughs> barely anything. I am trying to make sure that we are over in the Craft on the Clock group because this is a 45 minute segment. Um, over there we are also broadcasting into that group or you may be watching the replay later over on my YouTube channel you can find us in all kinds of places you guys all kinds of places but I hope that you guys are excited about this weekend this weekend's vintage and thrifted marathon I cannot wait two days Saturday and Sunday we're starting bright and early Saturday morning 7 a.m. and I'm actually doing a pre-event kickoff tomorrow evening Friday evening I never go live on a Friday evening you guys <laughs> and there may not be anybody show up but we'll see tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Central I have a special project to kick off our weekend I hope you'll be able to join me tomorrow for that I can't wait to show you what we've got planned for that it's gonna be amazing amazing so tomorrow it's 7 p.m. I'm doing a little pre-event kickoff and then bright and early Saturday morning 7 a.m. Uh, you'll see us kick off the weekend. Kick off the uh, full weekend. All presentations will be 30 minutes so you'll want to be sure that you're in the event group. How do you find that event group? If you go to Facebook and just search at the top, search for the words vintage, oh see, all things vintage and thrifted. 
okay and you'll find a Facebook group and you'll probably recognize the graphic that's there on that group um, and that'll be where we have all of the presentations there every presentation will be 30 minutes so it's short and sweet you get the project you get the bulk of it and then we're moving on to another one we've got so much good content heading your way you guys you won't want to miss a minute okay so I want to make sure that you're in that group and ready to roll before Saturday morning <laughs> um, I have you tagged on oh goodness Danny good she's got a, our event tagged on her calendar you are with it girl um, I'm making sure we are pinned at the top because at the craft on the clock group because we have some watchers that are looking for us over there this turned out really cute I still smell a hint of chalk paint I get a little hint of some cinnamon and vanilla <laughs> but it's just got a good creamy look to it I do still have some streaks on it am I okay with that I think but I think I'm gonna give it one more quick coat light quick coat um, because I do still see a few streaks and I don't want it to look I don't want it to look streaky I want it to do I do want it to look soft um, these would be cute little items to make and resell if you do craft shows um, because you're you're basically using um, trash and turning it into something adorable okay all right one more quick coat let's let this dry and while we're letting that dry I am going to pull out my little printable that I have right here let me grab my scissors now this little printable I printed it uh, twice because I'm probably gonna do two jars probably won't do two jars on the live today but um, unless we have time we might <laughs> so I'm gonna cut this down to size I usually I usually do not like straight edges do I want straight edges right now hmm we're going in we're doing a straight edge I don't know for some reason on this little milk jar I think a straight edge is just gonna look better I don't know I may totally decide that I'm not with it good morning miss Barb thank you for sprinkling I appreciate that so very much you guys have been so helpful when it comes to that lately I've I appreciate every single one of you that do that and I try to go back and uh, let you know that I appreciate that too because that that uh, helps me out so much hello miss Roxana and Kathy how are you guys I'm just cutting this little printable label down many of you have probably already purchased this little label set because it is a label set that we have used previously when we did our little grubby I think it was when we did our little grubby jar light um, this was one of the designs in the little set that I created I can't remember for sure um, I just printed this off on my home printer nothing complicated about it whatsoever you guys that's already dry all right now uh, this I pr it prints this color it prints on white paper I just use regular printer paper you guys copy paper and it prints in this color um, I am gonna go over it with just a light light glazing of this coffee grunge mix because I want the smell there <laughs> And I wanted just a little bit of discoloration to it, which it already does have a little bit of discoloration to it. I want to add just a little bit more. And they will also coordinate. Um, oh, thank you, Melissa. <laughs> um, it'll also kind of coordinate with all of my other little projects that we've got going on. So I'm going to kind of do a soft sweep just to make sure I don't have it too heavily loaded. Oh, uh, yeah, that's perfect. This coffee grunge mix, I don't know what it is. It just kind of brings out, it just, it brings out the color tones let me show you what I mean um, and I think it's that same amber color um, but it just I don't know it brings it out even brighter so let me show you this is the one that I printed without any of special effects added this one as the coffee grunge mixed it and look how look how much prettier that is can you tell a difference I think so for sure this is more faded um, and this looks I don't know just looks more vintage to me call me crazy I don't know <laughs> all right all we're gonna do we're gonna add a little bit of Mod Podge to the top of this 
And since I don't have a paper plate, we're going straight to the paper today with this. I think I already have a little bit of coffee mix. <laughs> a little bit of instant coffee added to that um, to that Mod Podge. All right, I'm trying to see which, is there a side that I think looks better? Not really, not really. So let's just see where we want this. That's gonna be really cute, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of Mod Podge. Am I though? <laughs> I'm rethinking everything, you guys. I just wanna make sure I don't mess it up. All right, everything's fixable. Everything's fixable, I gotta remember that. Now, this is not gonna be your stark white bottle, milk bottle, okay? Because this is an old grungy milk bottle. <laughs> we have to remember that. It has to have some good discoloration to it, but still have the white color so that we know that it's for what, for milk. This is actually says buttermilk, so not that it's typically any drastically of a different color than regular milk, but sometimes a little, has a little more of a buttery color. I'm not a huge buttermilk fan, but <laughs> I do know a little bit about it. Sometimes I use buttermilk with um, in certain recipes, but all right. Now, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over the rest of this jar and coat it with that same little Mod Podge mixture. This Mod Podge mixture has ever so slightly a little bit of that coffee grunge mixed in with it, which is gonna kinda grunge it up a little bit more. I'm okay with that. If you're not okay with that, you go with straight up Mod Podge and it'll be more white and uh, dry clear. This Mod Podge will dry clear but since I have a little bit of that coffee grunge mixed in with it, it will also leave a little bit of that cinnamon um, graininess behind if after it dries, if you know what I mean. And it'll have it, it'll have a little bit more of that coffee, ever so hint of a coffee uh, stain to it, okay? Which will really make this uh, white look more vintage. That, I like that. I like that a lot. So I'm gonna kind of let you see um, the front and the back because I have not, now keep in mind this is still wet. So it is it is a little shiny and there is still a little more white to it. Let me smooth out my lines here. I don't want any brush strokes to be super obvious. Okay, I don't know. I hope my lights will cooperate. This little label right here, I hit it and it's wanting to peel up. Okay. All right, let's see if the light, okay. I'm gonna hold it back here. All right, you can see a little bit of the streaking, the little vintage color to it, right? Now the back side is more that creamy off white, okay? So when I went over it with that Mod Podge that had a little bit of the coffee grunge mixed in with it, you see the different effect. So you can totally leave that part out, use straight up clear, untouched Mod Podge <laughs> or glue, whatever, you know, whatever works for you. Um, you would have more of this kind of a look on the back, but you can see the fine line of the difference right there. Um, and I like that. I think that works with my label and it kind of gives me that grungy look. Without doing a whole lot, you guys, so simple. So, so simple. I hope I've given you all so many ideas of how you could use that coffee grunge mix. <laughs> It's amazing, you guys, and all it is, um, if you wanna check out my page, My Sweet Home Living on Facebook, I have that coffee grunge recipe pinned at the top of my page so that you can see it. And you can even save the image. You can save it to your phone and keep it there on your phone if you wanna reuse it or refer back to it. Um, but it's so easy to use, so easy to use. I'm loving this already. And all we have to do is kind of um, embellish the top right here and we're gonna rest up that little lid. And this is gonna look so cute with some of our other little farmhouse breakfast items that we've been working on, you guys. Everything that I bring to you, I hope that you find that it all coordinates together so that once you create one project, you can move to the next and then the next and the next and before long, you will have so many little items that will all work together in a cohesive display, okay? Uh, a lot like the display I have behind me. Um, I have 
probably three or four other displays around my home that all use a lot of this, these projects that we've been working on and they all can be mixed and matched and they just coordinate together perfectly. And if you use, if you're consistent about using that coffee grunge mix, it gives everything the same tone and same style, that same look, it all just works together. And that's what makes, I think, you know, not only crafting fun, but also when it comes to using those crafts and those projects that we make, that we can use them in our home all cohesively, that is the key for me. I think that's the key when it comes to really creating and crafting projects that you can use not just make once and have to find out oh well it doesn't work anymore in my home i gotta you know <laughs> pass it along which is okay too but when you create things that have a style to them you'll be able to see how you can use them just over and over and mix and match you can move them from one place of your house to another i have something on my lip <laughs> Uh, but I hope that that's I hope that you've enjoyed that part of this because I really have and I hope you guys have too all right so all I'm gonna do with this lid all right if you choose to use the lid I suppose you could just leave it off I'm just gonna give it a quick coat of this same um, chalk paint that has a little bit of our coffee grunge mixed in with it it just tones it down gives it a warmer color I'm just gonna coat this lid and we're gonna dry it and then we're gonna add, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna add um, some rust to it, of course, because it's a metal lid, you know, anything vintage that's rust, that's old, has to have some rust. <laughs> and I keep hitting it, that's okay. It's not gonna be perfect, my rust is gonna cover it anyway. It's gonna cover it anyway. All right, and you know what? I think even while that little bit of paint is wet, I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle it a little bit with some cinnamon. You can completely coat it with cinnamon. It's all about whatever look you wanna go for. You can um, completely cover it or you can just lightly sprinkle it. I mean, it's really whatever look you go for. You can start light and you can always add more. But once you get it on there, you're kinda stuck with it. <laughs> so if you're not sure, start light and then work your way up. I'm gonna focus really well around the edges because to me, I feel like that's where the rust would kind of show up the most. Woohoo! A little more than I intended, but that's okay. <laughs> We're gonna go with a heavy coat. All right, I'm gonna give that a quick dry. I'm not gonna worry if it's completely dry in a minute because I'm gonna add a little bit of Mod Podge on top of it. And that'll kind of seal that cinnamon right on there. And let's see who's here. Your house smells like fall. I just got, oh, canning apple butter. Oh, I bet that's amazing. I bet that's amazing. We made a little grubby jar light, although I took my lights out of it. It has a little apple butter label on it. Isn't that cute? With some little sweet Annie and a little um, cheese, coffee stained cheesecloth on there. That would be cute. I bet your house does smell absolutely amazing. All right, let's close that cinnamon up. All right, so I've got a little bit of that Mod Podge. I need a little bit more because my little sponge just soaked it right up. And I want to just kind of dab it on this lid. I think I'm going to turn that off for a second. All right, yeah, dab it. And that's going to kind of cure that lid and make it look good and rusty. You won't even know it was a Starbucks lid, you guys. <laughs> Otherwise, you probably would have thrown the bottle away. I can't, it, it bugs me so bad to throw jars away. And I hold on to them. Sometimes, sometimes when I get in a, a purging, <laughs> a purging spray, I'll say, okay, I gotta, you know, I gotta pitch some of them out. But um, more times than not, I hang on to them as long as I possibly can um, and reuse them reuse them so while that's drying a little bit let's put the lid on here and let's see I want to show you something else while this is drying I have okay I've got all kinds of stuff on my table you guys <laughs> um, actually let's go ahead and let's embellish the top of this real quick while this is drying 
all I think I'm going to do right here, I think I'm going to take a little bit of some jute twine and just, I would put a little dab of hot glue, but I'm not going to worry about the hot glue right now. I didn't turn my hot glue on today. Um, so I'm just going to wrap it over itself. Add just a little bit at the top. I don't want a whole lot. Actually, I'm going to have to tie it. Otherwise, it won't stay, will it? We can do that too. All right, let's see what we got here. There we go. Just whatever looks best to you, you guys. This is just an idea that you can take and make it your own. All right, I'm just going to tie a little knot at the top. You could add a little hang tag if you wanted, I suppose. But I feel like the label, I feel like if I added a hang tag, I think it would just take away from our little, our little label right there. I don't want to do that. That's too cute. All right, so I'm just going to let that hang, I think. Yeah. I think, I think. And then I have a little um, grungy, little rusty safety pin with a little bell. I think I'm going to add that to the top. Let's see if I can get my safety pin to cooperate here. Just to give a little bit of extra something something at the top. And this rusty is going to kind of coordinate with our little lid that's going to be rusty. There we go. That's Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's cute already. That's cute already. I love it. Okay, let's make sure that this is <laughs> it's getting a little too hot and it's making my grunge bubble. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's that metal super hot. All right, let's let that cool. Um, I think once it cools, I think we'll be ready to move on. So here's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> here's what I'm thinking. I have a little egg basket, a little mini egg basket. <clears throat> I couldn't, I think this came from Hobby Lobby, but I've had it for ages. I've had it for ages. So I think I'm going to kind of display this, you guys. Hang with me for a second. I have some Excelsior, okay? A lot, you see this a lot of use with uh, scarecrows and things like that. A lot of times in the fall kind of projects. Let me open this, and sorry for the loudness. I'm going to take some of this Excelsior out. It's messy. <laughs> it's just like moss. It's messy, but it gives you the cutest effect, you guys. All right, I might have to cut this apart. We'll see. We'll see how well it wants to cooperate here. I'm gonna pull out a good handful. I would advise to do that over the trash can, <laughs> if you can. All right, so I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna kind of wisp it around in what would look like a little nest. If you wanted to, you can even add a little bit of coffee grunge mix to this. It already does have a little bit of, of uh, variation in color. It can see through there. Um, gosh, I've got the shakes in my hands today, you guys. Um, I'm going to put this down in my little egg basket right here. You could add some coffee grunge mix to that and let it dry. It would kind of give you a little bit nice of a smell. Then I'm going to use some faux eggs. I love using these little faux eggs. You can find these lots of different places. I think I have found them on Amazon. I think I found some at Hobby Lobby. They can be kind of pricey, so you kind of want to shop around um and they're like i've seen some wooden ones that are really cute but these are actually like i guess these are porcelain maybe that's what you would call these i don't know um so i'm laying these in my little egg basket just like so now i have i did not make this i purchased this many 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 moons ago <laughs> but you could use the same idea that we used to make our grain sacks you have a little find a little printable little poultry grain sack, okay? But isn't that cute? I'm gonna toss that in with my little egg basket right here. I need to prop my eggs up a little bit. I might have to add just a little bit more excelsior to kind of fill up my egg basket here a little bit. Kind of soften in between those eggs a little bit too. There we go. Ah, oh, this is looking cute, looking cute. I like to see some of that Excelsior kind of hanging out too. I think that's cute. All right, so tucking that in. I like this little handle. Um, now you could definitely use this, if you find a bigger egg basket, you could make this on a different, a larger scale. Got it? So don't let, I mean, this is just a little mini version. 
and just using what I had. Okay, this is already dry. So I'm gonna put this on the top of our little milk jar. If you wanted to, you could add a little bit of glue to that. But is that not cute? I love that. Now my lighting is kind of making it really shiny. <laughs> it's not really that shiny. <laughs> it's just a soft, um, creamy white. And I think what I'm gonna do, I think, let me see. I might have to take some of these eggs out and add them last. Because I don't want them to be buried so much that we don't see them. Okay, I do kind of need one down there for my bottle to sit on. Let me look at this from this angle. <laughs> and then I can always turn it around and show you what we got here. Yeah, that's, oh, that's cute. Okay. So, I have shown you how to make these little grain sacks before, you guys. Using your home printer and some printable labels, you can totally do this. Totally. Let me see. I need another little egg right down there. Just get it arranged just right because I want to be able to see the label. I want to see my little um, my little sack and still see the eggs too. Oh, that's cute. This little egg has seen better days. It has, I'm not sure what it has on it. I think it has a little bit of Mod Podge on it. <laughs> oh, that's cute. A little bit more Excelsior. I think we'll be finished. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, that stuff's so hard to pull out. <laughs> Yeah, stuff that in around. You know what? I think I'm going to tuck some around from the back side of that little jar. Oh, that's so, so cute. Okay, you guys. There we have it. Is that not precious? Now, this would look so cute tucked in with anything else that we've made. Let's just kind of go over a little rundown. It would be cute next to our faux crock, our faux stoneware crock would look cute. All those colors coordinate and mix together. It would look super cute next to our bowl of faux biscuits. We've got milk, we've got eggs, we've got biscuits. What else do you need for a good primitive country style breakfast? Is that not adorable, you guys? I'm loving it. Loving it. I hope this has given you some inspiration on how you can use some of these items today. The same printable label we've used for some of our other little grubby jars. Save, save those Starbucks glass jars. <laughs> They're so much fun to use. You know what? I like hanging a little piece of raffia from the top of this. And what I do, I have a little blanket ladder um, in my dining area. It's actually over here on this wall. You just can't see it from the camera angle. But I usually tie this to one of the uh, rungs of my blanket ladder. And I have my whole little blanket ladder display set up. And it doesn't all have always have blankets on it. I, I keep a blanket or two at the bottom, but like the top two or three rungs, I always decorate with a wreath and some little other little things. But I hang this with a little piece of raffi and make a little bow and tie it onto one of the rungs of my blanket ladder. And it's so cute, so cute. Um, I hope that you guys loved this today, and if you did, I want you to press that heart <laughs> before you leave me today. Hello, Miss Sonia. Oh, friend, you're never late. I thank you for being here anytime on the replay or during the live at any time. I appreciate you so much. Um, I will be live again tomorrow night, Friday evening at 7 p.m. on Facebook on my page, My Sweet Home Living to do a pre-event kickoff at 7 p.m. for our Vintage and Thrifted Marathon that's all starting on Saturday, carrying all the way through Sunday, you guys. I hope that you can join me uh, and show up for that. I know you will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Can't wait to see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. You all have a wonderful day. Check out the next creator up after me over in the Craft on the Clock group. We have live crafting Monday through Friday, early morning to late at night every single week, all for you. Take care and I'll see you soon.